So I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Olushomi Delano. I am an architect and a structural engineer um, here in Lagos. And I'm also the lead of the uh, restorations team for Legacy, uh, which is a historic preservation, a leading historic uh, preservation group in Nigeria. And together with Femke, who's also here, uh, we are going to guide you through today's webinar, which is really to celebrate and honor the work of Baba uh, Demas Nwoko, who's here as well on the call. So as you all know, because you joined this call, was that um, Baba won the Golden Lion for Lifetime Achievements um, in Venice, which honors which honors, you know, just, uh, which was a great occasion to really celebrate and spotlight the great work that is coming out of Nigeria and in Africa. When you talk about architecture and then you speak about vernacular architecture from Nigeria, there's no better example than Baba Demas Nwoko's work. I'd also like to welcome representatives from the Nigerian Institute of Architects, and the National Council uh, for Museums and Monuments in um, for Nigeria, and also UNESCO. Thank you for taking time out to uh, join us on this call. And most of all, to the members of the public and heritage enthusiasts, who I'm very confident will join Legacy by the end of this call, allowing our society to grow and grow and grow. So thank you for taking time out to hear about this. It promises to be a really uh, interesting day. Um, our program will start with a virtual tour of, of Baba's buildings in Ibadan and a short video of um, him receiving the Golden Lion in Venice, which took place earlier this year. After these videos, uh, we'll have a few other panelists, including Professor Abimbola, um, Asojo, I hope I'm saying that correctly, who will give a presentation of um of what of uh, of of uh, Baba's work and what it actually what you know his work means to her, and um all the panelists today have close connections with uh, Baba Demas and Walker, and they're going to shed light to what it really means, and I think that will be such a great thing for Heat to hear as well. I'm sure he's heard it before to hear again, to hear what other people how his work has inspired um, uh, these panelists. After that, we would open the floor to the audience and have like a Q&A session where people can pose questions in the chat as well. And just really just make this an interactive session where we all just um, speak and get excited about architecture and the built heritage and Baba's work. Um, Unless Femke wants to add anything, I suppose we will uh, go straight into the virtual tour.
thank you for that video and i hope you all enjoyed it as much as i did because vernacular architecture is this thing that we talk about today and when you ask anyone those buildings that we just saw where could they be you definitely know that it's somewhere in africa and so i think it's very successful actually what baba uh did in those um in the design of of, of the two buildings we just saw. Um, and I personally haven't visited and now I really want to visit those spaces. Um, at this point, I would hand over to uh, Mrs. Sonia Ali, who is the president of Legacy to uh, just officially open the event and you know maybe say one or two things. Uh, good. I suppose good afternoon to everybody in Nigeria here where I am. It's actually early morning, but I'm so very pleased to be here with you. And I want to tell you about my own experience with the, the work of Demos Norco. Uh, I joined uh, Legacy in the early 80s. And one of the very first uh, AGMs we had when uh, Professor Godwin was president was in Ibadan and at the Cultural Institute uh, that Davis Woku had uh, designed. And uh, we were then, after that, told a lot about his work. Now, Legacy is an organization that is very interested in um, history, history, but also in environmental issues. And of course, the work of Davis Woku very much takes care of both of them. We were all of us very, very impressed with the way he uses materials that are locally available rather than all kinds of imported things and how he built buildings that were perfectly comfortable to live in in Nigeria without having the aid of air conditioning etc. This touched me very much. Um, later on we were invited to vi visit his home where I seem to remember he did not he was not there but we were welcomed by his daughter. But the place that I have always loved, I have visited many times since, has uh, has been the Dominica, Dominican uh, chapel and uh, uh, and the area around there. It is wonderful, and Somi, you should go there because it is really beautiful. I would recommend anybody who is interested in buildings and history in Nigeria to go to Ibadan. It's a wonderful place, and it has some really interesting buildings. And the work of Demos Moku uh, has been instrumental in not only that, but also to open our eyes to the fact that we should not rely on everything coming from outside, that we have in Nigeria wonderful, beautiful things that need to be preserved. The work of Demos Nwoko is the, a work that I have a lot of respect for, and I'm so very happy to see that he has been able to join us here today. And I really hope that we, you will all enjoy the experience of seeing what he has been able to do and what the future will bring, which I know that architects that have joined us must be able to see. So thank you for coming, and I hope you will all enjoy the experience. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ali. And what you said there, um, you visited the Dominican Chapel, and you realized there wasn't that need for air conditioning. You know, if anyone is like me in Lagos, I can't even go through a night's sleep without switching off the AC because it's so hard to regulate um, the air conditioning. So this idea of being a uh, vernacular architecture, which is also sustainable, shows that Baba it was even ahead of the time because it's what we as architects are trying to do today not least because of the high electricity prices. But, um, you know, it's um, sustainable design um, is one of those things that, again, is when you meet that with vernacular architecture and can produce beautiful uh, buildings, such as we just saw the Dominican Chapel and also the new cultural studios, I think that's the wonderful place that you want to be. So thank you for that introduction. And now we're going to see um, just um, an excerpt from uh, Baba receiving the Golden Lion um, Award. Uh, so over to you, Femke.
Now it is uh, like a joy of destiny that uh, this year I was invited. Uh, I'm now invited to Venice to receive uh, 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 this great honor uh, for the, for my work. Well, it includes the theater because they said uh, lifetime achievement, but mostly on the year of architecture, uh, which. Again, I'm grateful to uh, the, the curator, Mr. Loku, and uh, the benefactor, uh, the David Aja, for, for funding the exhibition, a, a whole pavilion of my work in this uh, year's uh, Banali. Baba, which is a Nigerian honorific title, is everything all at once. An architect, sculptor, designer, writer, set designer, critic, and historian. When pushed, he refers to himself as an artist designer, which speaks to the polyglot nature of his talents and to the rather narrow interpretation of the word architect that has arguably kept his name out of the annals. It seems entirely fitting that the Golden Lion for Lifetime Achievement should be awarded to someone whose material works span 70 years, but whose immaterial legacy, approach, ideas, ethos, is still in the process of being evaluated, understood, and celebrated. The son of a traditional Obi ruler, he was born in 1935 in southern Nigeria. His early forays into painting, drawing, and carving at secondary school in Benin City pushed him to apply for a place to study architecture at the Nigerian College of Arts, Science, and Technology in Zaria. He was a founder member of the Zaria Art Society, also known as the Zaria Rebels, who were interested in the blend of modernity and African aesthetics as an authentic language to reflect the spirit of political independence growing in the 1940s and 1950s. This profound desire to blend and synthesize rather than sweep away has characterized Nwoko's work for over five decades. He was one of the first Nigerian makers of space and form to critique Nigeria's reliance on the West for imported materials and goods, as well as ideas, and has remained committed to using local resources. Although relatively few, Nwoko's buildings in Nigeria fulfill two critical roles. They are forerunners of the sustainable, resource-mindful, and culturally authentic forms of expression now sweeping across the African continent and the globe, and they point towards the future which is no mean achievement for someone whose work is still largely unknown, even at home. In 1977, writing about his first commission to build the complex for the Dominican Institute in Ibadan, the architectural critic Noel Moffat wrote, Here, under a tropical sun, architecture and sculpture combine in a way which only Gaudí, perhaps, amongst architects, has been able to do convincingly. It gives me enormous pride to have awarded the Golden Lion for Lifetime Achievement to Baba de Masamoko, an architect of both the 20th and 21st centuries. Thank you for that video, Femke. Um, and just a bit of background into um, what the Africa, uh, the Venice Biennale is. Actually, since 1979, the Golden Lion um, is is more or less one of the like the Oscars for architecture. So it's one of the highest peaks that um, you know a professional architect uh, or a practicing architect can reach. 
So it's, it must have been such a wonderful moment for Baba and something that we um, uh, Nigerians and all of Africa, in fact, all the Black diaspora are, are proud of. And um, this year, it was it was curated by Leslie Loko, who was the one that presented Baba with that award. And, um, you know, we're just very happy that, um, you know, he's getting the recognition that is needed. And interestingly, for some reason, you know, once you get this media publicity abroad, you might, you sometimes get greater publicity at home. And so we found that this recognition has even caused a lot more of us to know about uh, Baba's work, which is, you know, just a fantastic thing. Um, now we'll move to a presentation by uh, Professor Abimbola um, Ashujo. I'm, apologies if I'm not saying that correctly. Uh, Dr. Bimbola is the Dean and Professor of Morgan State University School of Architecture and Planning, with almost three decades of experience teaching and researching cross-cultural and sustainable design, African architecture, and also sustainable design. She started her, architect, her academic career at the University of Ileife. She calls uh, Baba Demas and Walker's work an inspiration and will explain to us how it inherently it is inherently modern and traditional at the same time. So, well, welcome, uh, Prof. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, good afternoon from Baltimore in Maryland. And um, I, I'm excited to be here. And um, Congratulations, Baba, for your award again. Um, this is the first time I'm seeing you after the award. And um, I'm just sharing some pictures there because I was very fortunate to visit Baba in his house in Uboko many years ago. And you can see my myself and my son. We visited his house in the village. And um, you can see I went and I interviewed him there. And then I was also fortunate again to see him at the Bauhaus Imaginista um, event in Lagos in 2018. And those are pictures from there. So next slide, please. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about his work, what it means for me, and how, you know, I have been teaching students about his um, Nigerian architecture through his work. So we already saw the video of the Dominican Institute, the Dominican Church in Ibadan. And I, I just have a few images here again. So um, I can talk a little bit about it. This will be more still images because we saw the video. So when you look at the church, it really is like a juxtaposition of traditional and contemporary culture. And um, one of the reasons after Vatican II, the Catholic church allowed um, elements from culture and tradition to be integrated into worship and into the architecture of um, spaces. So that's how um, Baba Nwoko designed this church at the Dominican in Ibadan. I'm fortunate I've worshiped at the church as a little girl. And also I have visited and I actually have a video about it that I will pop into chat later. And you can also watch through walking through the church, um, talking with the, um, the priest who is now like the rector of the whole Dominican Institute. So basically, you know, the Dominican order takes a vow of poverty and that vow of poverty is mimicked in the design of the space um, through the use of traditional elements and natural elements. So it's like when you look at the, um, the facade, it's left unfinished and you can see the traditional materials there. And also you can see the elements from the, the Benin culture as well as the Yoruba culture that are, that are around the facade of the church. Next slide, please. So these are just some more pictures of the church. And th there's a pond around the perimeter of the building. And the interesting thing is that the priest mentioned that the reason there's a pond around the perimeter is like, you know, when you move from the space into the church, you're moving from, you're moving into a sanctuary. So the water around the perimeter is, 
creates that nature that natural form and then you're close to nature again and you can see some of the elements of the traditional culture that are on the the facade of the church in these images that you can see here so next slide please yeah i was also fortunate like i said to visit his house in um in in the village and you can see, I mean, I was fascinated. It's also been mentioned here. There's a lot of use of natural materials. Um, the, 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 the walls are left unfinished. So, and then the adobe too. When we were fortunate too, when we visited, Baba also let us stay in the place, you know. I mean, it was late. We came all the way from Norman, Oklahoma then to visit and conduct a study and just research about his work. So my opportunity was to interview him and talk to him. Of course, Baba was like, you know, you all are not leaving because we're not going to let you go back um, to, to Ibadan today. So we stayed and it's interesting. Some things have already been mentioned. Like it could be like 90 degrees outside. Whereas when you're in the space, you feel this coolness because it's like the temperature really drops because of the materials he used. Like as it has been mentioned earlier today, um, it was already practicing sustainability before people started to talk about it. And you know, there's a lot of use of. The, you can see the second image to your to your left, the impluvium style from the traditional indigenous um, architecture is abstracted, and it's in the center of the of the building. So you can see that in there. And um, I mean, it was just phenomenal for me to visit and, um, you know, learn about his work. So next slide, please. And you could see, also see like the traditional um, patterns that are in the doors too. And Baba also designs all the furniture in the space as well. You can see some of the furniture here and the furniture that was also in the Dominican church that we saw earlier on. So if you can move to the next slide, and that's me interviewing him, courtesy of my son. He took some of those pictures for me. So my son was my, my research assistant during that trip. The other thing that I really want to mention is the pedagogical impact of his work in the diaspora. Because when I teach my students about Nigerian architecture, one of the, I mean, it's always, I always show them design precedents from um, architect Woko's work. So his work has actually helped me a lot to create like diverse and global design discourse within the curriculum here. So if you're trying to help students understand the cultural, the social and the economical and the political circumstances of any culture, it's, I mean, it's just been phenomenal to use his work to explain um, and showcase examples to students like in the Dominican chapel, as well as his house, which I've published and written a lot about in books and articles as well. Next slide, yeah. And, you know, this cultural framework was actually derived by looking at his work because, you know, when you ask students to solve problems in a cultural setting, it's always like a mystery for them. And, um, you know, I started to abstract and look at his work and see ways by which I can be a better teacher in the classroom to have my students design in a cross-cultural setting. So. In, when you look at this framework that was developed from his work, the first part looks at juxtaposing traditional and contemporary culture. And you saw that in his work. And then social dynamics, looking at the, the, you know, the philosophy, the religion, the government, and the iconic people in the culture. And of course, elements and principles of design. You know, it's interesting. When I started my career as an academic, there wasn't much that was written about Nigerian architecture per se. Because when you're looking for information or even African architecture, if you Google African architecture, most times few books come up. So I feel, you know, one thing that um, Baba Demasuoko has helped us do is to create that narrative for African architecture and to really showcase that elements, design elements and principles that we talk about are actually present in, in Nigerian architecture and in African architecture. Also, his work uses a lot of visual and performance arts. You've heard a lot about um, theater today because you know the sanctuary in the Dominican is actually likened to theater arts or performance arts and and then sustainability I always um 
use his work to demonstrate a concrete example of sustainable design in the Nigerian context. I remember talking to um, um, architect John Godwin. Architect John Godwin has gone and analyzed um, Baba's house in, in Uboko, and he actually took light meters there to measure the temperature outside and actually look at the difference of the temperature when you get inside the building to really document and um, really confirm the those sustainable practices. So that's what I wanted to just add to that conversation. So next slide, please. So when I, I use this cultural framework and I wanted to present here examples of students actually working on design problem solving in um, for Nigerian spaces in America. This is actually a project by one of my students in Minnesota from several years ago. And the project prompt was to design a retail store in an airport in Lagos, Muritara Mohammed Airport, to, uh, you know, as people are traveling through to learn about the culture. And they started with, you know, the, um, concepts I shared with you earlier on. And I also, the design precedents I share with them are the examples from architect Demaso Woko's work. So I just wanted to share some of this and you can see again how um, the student abstracts the impluvium style, the, the impluvium, the courtyard and abstracts it in their design solution and uses this warm palette in their solution as well. So next slide. Yeah. So, I wanted to, I'll be remiss if I don't acknowledge that a lot of the publications that I've written, you know, I've also focused a lot on architect Woko's work. Um, this particular one, um, the first one here that looks at, it's actually in a book that came out in 2021. I'm going to put a plug for the book, um, African Humanity, Creativity, Identity, and Personhood. It was co-edited by myself and um, um Professor Falola from UT Austin. And there's a chapter in there that talks about sustainable design strategies in Nigeria. And two of the examples profiled in there are the Dominican church, as well as um, architect Woko's house in Uboko. And then, you know, I'm, I, I can post some of this in chat for you later. And then coiling a curriculum, I do a lot of work with my students here where they're designing a cross-cultural setting. And, you know, in order to design, in Nigeria, or even to understand the ramifications of um, Nigerian architecture, the students are always looking at architect Woko's design precedents, and I'm talking through it and sharing some of that with them. And then another article that was published here that I'll encourage you to look at, the influence of indigenous forms and arts and symbols in sacred spaces in Nigeria, that was co co written by myself and my mother. My mother is a philosopher. So we were looking at the influences of indigenous arts and symbols in Nigeria. And the Dominican is highly featured in there as well. So I, yeah, I, I think that's my last slide. And um, I know that we have time for panels and discussion. I will pop into chat the video that the video recorded when we walked through the Dominican, talking with the priest about um, the Dominican Institute. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Prof, for um, those slides that really speak to his work. It was, um, you know, it. one of the things that stuck to me, actually, was where you said uh, you were introducing his work, uh, Baba's work, to your students. And, you know, a big thing that is spoken about in the Western University is this idea of decolonizing the the uh, curriculum, um, and in fact, you find that even home, even here at home in Nigeria, we don't even um, study enough. We haven't made the efforts enough to uh, even like introduce our own to celebrate our own work. So it's fantastic that you are inspiring minds in in America about um, you know uh, Baba's work, and because at work today, I asked my colleagues who studied. Uh, in Nigerian universities, if they had heard of Baba's work and or where they first heard about him, and it was after school, you know, it would have been so amazing. And that's why we're, we, we are having this call and part of Legacy's involvement is to actually spread word and, like, you know, helping in, 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 a, 
improving the studying of Nigerian or of our cultural heritage. So we have a few people from universities in Nigeria on the call, and I'm sure this has inspired them to even, or they perhaps are even already doing it, to you know bring in a bit more, um, uh, to literally like speak to uh, Baba's work to their students. So thank you again uh, for those presentation. Sorry. Now we have you about to say something. Okay? Shall we shall we take a short moment to also welcome and acknowledge the presence of some representatives of important organizations that can help uh, preserve, protect, and promote uh, Baba Demas Morpho's heritage? Uh, Mrs. Raina Garba, the acting director of monuments and sites for the National Commission for Museums and Monuments, is here. Um, representing the Director, Director General of the NCMM, Victor Ajaibo, National Program Officer of UNESCO Abuja, Eni Ben Ebo, Architect Eni Ben Ebo, President of the Nigerian Institute for Architects, and then also several representatives of the Dominican Order, among whom the Senator of the Dominican University of Ibadan. You are very most welcome, and we are very happy that you are joining this discussion. Over to you, Shomi. And now we will speak to the three other panelists for about five minutes, each of them, who have been um, touched and have personal relationships with the Baba, actually. The first we have is Joseph Conte, who was born in Sierra Leone and came to Europe at the age of 16 and studied where he studied architecture. He vividly remembers the first time he saw an image of the altar of Baba Demas and Walker's Dominican Chapel in Ibadan in 2016. What went through? Joseph, are you um, are you able to speak now? Where's Joseph? Is Joseph on the call? Yes, okay. I'm, I'm. I'm having some problems with this. Um, so, yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, you can. So, Joseph, what was what went through your mind Hello? when you, can you saw? Hear me? Yes, we can. We can. So what went through your mind when you first saw the image? Well, uh, yeah, I, I think my, my... Uh, Joseph, we can't hear you now. Okay. Um, well, okay, Joseph, maybe we'll come back to you while you're, I guess you're fixing your audio. And then we'll speak to um, Ayodele Arik Babu, uh, who's also on the call. Are you there? See that. Can you unmute if you are? Uh... Yes, I'm here. If you can. Okay, great. And so... Yes. So a bit of, about uh, Ideally Ari uh, Babu is he's a bit of a renaissance man, like uh, Baba Demas Nwoko himself. Ideally is a publisher and member of the board of Kora, a Nigerian cultural organization, and is currently doing his PhD in artistic research at the Trondheim Academy of Fine, Art, Fine Arts in Norway, where he's speaking from today. And he studied architecture at the University of Lagos. Mr. Ari Gabu, when you were at Unilag, what did you know about uh, Baba Demas Nwoko's work? Was it a subject in your curriculum? Um, Baba's work. Uh, just a minute. Baba's work was known to us in the department. It was known to our lecturers. Um, however, it was not um, formally introduced as a part of the curriculum. Uh, but for those of us who were interested in um, taking the courses we had been given in traditional Nigerian or traditional African architecture, for, for those of us who were, who were interested... Sorry, sorry, hold on. Okay. For, for those of us who are interested in taking those studies further, um, 
started already. You know, we, we got to hear um, um Baba's work, and um for me that meant um that meant listing his work as part of the case studies for my final thesis in in um for my master's degree. Um, so while his work was not formally um, listed as part of the curriculum, his influence was um, quite heavy in the department, even though at the same time, it, it was also kind of watered down because some lecturers actually really didn't understand how to place him. Um, some will be dismissive and say, oh, that artist, um, he's an artist. Um, but it's it's been interesting to um to have met him subsequently and to have had the privilege to go through the archives of his work, to have had the privilege of interviewing and discussing with him about his approach to architecture, and I've also had the privilege of actually walking through a design with him, um, actually being his hands and his eyes um on that design and to realize how deeply, deeply, deeply talented and how um incredible his attention to detail is to the extent that we could have a conversation at 6 p.m the night before and he will go to bed i mean he's not going to open the pc to look at the drawings or anything but he would have worked out some intricate details in his mind during the night to a high level of fidelity and then he would just start calling out instructions like the conductor of an orchestra just calling out instructions of how the drawing should be done. And, you know, it, it, it was um, an amazing experience seeing him do that. Um, yeah, I'm sure that like, it, it, it sounds a lot like it, actually. And, you know, it's uh, one of those moments that clearly has, uh, you know, meant so much and also informed your current research and your uh, current uh, design decisions as you work. So to, when were you at Unilag? So we can put that time frame in... Um, uh, in context and what period, was, what years were those? Um, I left the campus in twenty in December twenty twenty two. December, so quite recent. I'm pretty sure after this so going December two thousand and two. Not so. Recent. Okay, <laughs> that's what I was thinking as well. But I thought you know you probably know your dates better than me. So I think that you know with the Golden Lion now, I am sure that uh, there will be some kind of um, re-energizing and refocus on his work and like an attempt to really understand it and place it within um, uh, the curriculum, which is very important, actually. Yes, definitely. A lot has changed between when I was writing my thesis and now. Uh, for example, when I was writing my thesis, there was not a lot about Dimas Nwoko on the internet. Maybe there are just five um, links that will come up if you Google his name. Uh, but right now, there's quite a lot. And also, there are a number of lecturers in the department, uh, my colleagues, who, like me, are very interested in his work. And as scholars, um, just like Professor Ashaju, they have um, researched on his work. And um, they even, I, I'm not sure if they do this formally uh, within the um, context of the school curriculum, but I do know that they engage um, the students on Baba's work. And um, of course, um, Professor John Godwin's book and research on Dimas Nwoko's work had already broken a lot of barriers in the past, which also shows the importance of scholarly works on uh, the things that are important to us in our culture and in our environment. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Ayodele. That's, uh, you know, it's very good to understand really what it's like uh, contextually and uh, learning about his work and, and how much more needs to be done. And so now I'll speak to Mrs. Ani Bofu Ubudaga, who, are you here on the call? You must be. Yes, and, I am. All right, so you can, um, um, yes, so great. And she is a Nigerian architect and in her own words, has a focus to achieve the highest possible human comfort, physically, mentally, and visually. She's also the second daughter of Baba Dema Sunwoko and is closely connected to his work. Mrs. Ugodaga, can you please explain to the audience what the new culture movement is and how it is relevant to the future 
of your father's work and to other Nigerian and African architects and artists? Uh, Heavy question. <laughs> one. Um, uh, the new culture movement. I was that question. I would have actually loved it to have been thrown to someone like Aya or Joseph to talk about, <laughs> <laughs> really, um, rather than me, who is also his daughter. Um. Anyway, so uh, can I ask I, that? Yeah, Joseph, yes, Aya can also that? answer the question. Yeah, yeah. I, I can answer the question as well. Yes. Or even Joseph is he? Or even Joseph. Again? He, he said he was that, online yes, again. That aspect of it. If is is Joseph online now? Yeah. I, he said he was, again. but might be temporary. Okay. Ayo, go ahead. Okay. Um, new new culture is um the coinage Baba has given to uh the movements that his art symbolizes, and um. I I I I I know that as as recently as 2017, Baba had been working hard to. I mean, he's been doing this all his life, but in in recent terms, he he did put in quite a lot of effort to get some of us architects who are younger to him um, to come together, and most of us were in Lagos, and I think part of this was coming out of some of us coming to him at Idumuje Ugoko. And he just felt that, okay, if you guys are interested, you need to get together and do something about this. Um, so there are a few of us architects who are very interested and very passionate about Baba's work. Um, we see his work as, in fact, we actually thank him all the time for doing the work that he has done. Because if he didn't do that work, it would be harder for so many of us to say that this is the way architecture should be done in Nigeria. Um, and now it's, it's like Baba never stops. He's also gone ahead to get the Golden Lion. So there's even no reason for anybody not to be able to say proudly that this is the kind of architecture that we want to practice. Um, so this ap approach of doing architecture in the pure form from first principles is what those of us who uh, are gathered as architects in the new culture, um, in the new culture lineage uh, are certain that we seek to enshrine as a mainstream way of practicing architecture in Nigeria. Um, so uh, with difference to Shomi's re re referring to Baba's architecture as vernacular architecture, no, I, I don't think we want to even refer to it as vernacular architecture. It is architecture, period. It's the way architecture should be done. It's not some exotic architecture that should be relegated to a village somewhere no it's architecture the way we were even taught baba was asking me a hey, baba um, used to ask me occasionally that okay um, did they teach us traditional architecture in the university that did they teach us certain things and i kept saying yes that they did i realized that the gap was in the wheel to practice that architecture with the knowledge that we actually gained i guess not all universities had that um, well-rounded um, curriculum. But we did at the University of Lagos. Um, we learned a lot about traditional African and Nigerian architecture, but then you see very little influence of that in our practice of architecture. So that's where this new culture movement that we talk about, that's where it comes in. It's the idea that we take the knowledge that has already been learned and tested and practiced by our ancestors and we put it in practice with the new knowledge that we have as well. So Baba is not atavistic. It's not just going into the past and saying, oh, we must always do what they did in the past. No, it's taking knowledge from the past, synthesizing it from current knowledge, which we can see that is building with reinforced concrete. Baba does not joke around. His, draw, his architecture is properly processed. He collaborates with highly trained um, professionals. He's, you, you need to see the structural drawings on the projects that he has done. Everything is done in a very professional way, British standard, and architects will understand what that means, you know, compared to maybe how watered down things could, could have become over time now. Um, so the, the new culture idea is to practice architecture with this strong essence of relevance to the, to the local context, to the local economy, to the environmental factors, to the climate, 
comfort for the humans using the building, aesthetic um aesthetic inputs that is also relevant to the environment and climate in which the buildings will exist. These are all the principles of architecture that that you know you would say we all learned who are, who are you know properly trained architects. But in practice, um, certain habits that we've learned over time come into play. Certain pressures from clients who look at magazines and international um, ideas about architecture and try to point, you know, tear a leaf out of a magazine and say, design this for me. Uh, you know, there are lots of pressures, supply, supply chain issues. It is not easy practicing architecture the way Demas Oko has done. Um, however, but the first thing is even to understand what he has done and then start figuring out how to get there. And that's what we try to do as um, adherents in quotes of the new cultural movement. Yeah, uh, thanks for that uh, summary, actually. You know, there's some work for those of us in Lagos, you know, um, I, there, there, there's some there's some new work coming out and even uh, like ad, ad, um, architect Shonubi, I think is part of the movement. If he's not, he should be because <laughs> definitely he's giving this whole idea to, I won't use the word vernacular so Ayo doesn't come for me, <laughs> but using designing, you know, designing architecture in a way that, is, is reminiscent of place, which is exactly what Baba's work was. So at this point, I would open the discussion to the audience, um, and uh, but with, with a few remarks first. Yes, we are here, and I hope we've all enjoyed discussing and how to protect and preserve and promote the work of uh, Baba's work. As we speak, yeah. murals are being painted over and some of his artworks have disappeared, you know, and that's coming from the place of us not appreciating um, our culture or preserving our culture. That is why we want to go beyond just talking today and agree on four action points that our organizations can, um, can move forward and, you know, make this whole preservation work more achievable. Mrs. Ubudaga, you mentioned something that legacy as a heritage organization could do current con concretely when it comes to the artworks at Murtala Mohammed Airport. Uh, can you please speak a bit more to that? Um, okay, thank you so very much, Sami. Um, thank you, uh, Ayo, for doing justice to the new cultural movement. Um, just before I talk on that, uh, one important thing I'd also like to say about the new cultural movement is we have actually um, just registered officially uh, um, uh, an internship, like an institute where we're going to start having interns come in, which work as an internship um, place and also a finishing school. Which, would, which is going to be run by the New Culture Movement. This is fully registered, and you would all be hearing from us um, on that. We'll be taking students as interns, and we'll also have finishing school uh, there. So that, I find that pretty, pretty interesting. So that everything we've talked about, we will be able to communicate and bring to everyone. Um, okay. Now, I did mention legacy. Um being able to come in and well as a part of what legacy would be able to do. That was because I was asked the question and that was my direct response to it. And I mentioned the, the columns, the totems with um, chairs that were put along with the totems, which are Dimas's works at the Muritala Mohammed airport in Lagos. At some point, these totems disappeared. I mean, there were like about six of them. They disappeared. I tried to go and find out what has happened to it and could not really get any information as to where they have been moved. At some point when some renovation was happening, these totems basically disappeared. So yes, I did mention that um, when I was asked where Legacy could come in and do stuff, I said, well, a, a group like Legacy would be able to follow up on this and actually find out what happened to those um, totems. They are wooden carved pillars, beautifully carved pillars, which everybody was proud of. As soon as you arrive in Nigeria, it was at the arrivals, you just see these beautiful 
columns and they have been taken down just like the his work his painting at the Teda the painting is called Mama Teda which all of a sudden some um, vice chancellor at that time was renovating and painted over Mama Teda I'm sure if they tell him how much it will cost to actually peel that painting off to bring that artwork back, he'll be shocked. All these come out of ignorance that we have of the art in our society. And um, these are the kind of things that we should be able to do. I am Dimas's daughter. I grew up in this, in new culture, basically. My whole life has been new culture. So it's not surprising at all that um, that's all that I am about. When I was in school, my project, I remember doing my project, it had to do with um, African architecture, patterns, motifs, and um, uh, research on it. I remember Professor David Aradion telling me, he was my supervisor at that time. He said, hmm, you know, with this project, there's only two things. You can either do excellently well or fail completely. And that am I sure I want to take this up as a project? And I was like, most definitely, um, which means that it's either I communicate or I don't. It was an interesting one. And um, I hope it's still there at the, at the university. I went to University of Lagos as well. Same thing with Ayodele Ayubavu. Every okay. single house I lived in has been a new culture house except for the University of Ibado campus where we lived um, when my father was a lecturer there. So I'm very, very much used to, it's not surprising I went into architecture. We were always on site from whatever age we could actually be on site. We would always go to site, um, the Ibadan site, the, uh, the studio, the, the chapel, as well, we grew up within this space. It sounds, I this is I double like you've lived, Ubo Daga, like you've lived and breathed at your father's work. Exactly. And as an architect, it seems like such a privilege. Um, and hearing you even speak about those totems at the airport, I just happened to have entered the country through that airport and would love to see that beauty entering Nigeria. So I think it is something that legacy could pick up. Let's find out where they are. They can't just not have disappeared into thin air, I hope. In what other ways, uh, Professor Asojo, can we, uh, because we're here to talk about how to promote, protect, um, and preserve uh, Baba's work. In what other ways could academia help to, uh, in, in, in this order? Thank you so much for that question. I, we have to continue to write about it. You know, like I in my slides, I just gave a snapshot of examples of um, Baba's work. And um, I also showed one project that was inspired by his work, publishing about it and writing about it and disseminating it, because that's what we do well as academics. It's something that we all should um, do. I've been so inspired by um, his work because, you know, when I'm trying to teach my students about Nigerian architecture, his work are always the first examples I show them. And they get so fascinated and they're always so excited about it. Particularly, you know, the um, sustainable design movement is a huge movement now because we're trying to be more earth-centered and we're trying to be um, great stewards of the planet and gen and his work I mean was ahead of the curve in doing that so I mean I always um, I've, I mean I, I hold so many roles now I feel like I'm always multitasking one thing I want to do is I want to write a book on your work Baba so maybe mm -hmm. maybe I can find a publisher who will publish it it's something that I've always wanted to do and you know I um I've been so fortunate to visit a lot of his work and to also talk with him and learn about that so that's one thing and you know we just need to write about it showcase some of these examples and continue to share the knowledge thank you prof I happen to know that Joseph Conte who has a wobbly internet connection and sadly cannot join has written down a whole lot 
of what Baba himself yeah. would like to say and would like to publish. And we'll, usually, we'll surely get into that at a later stage. Right now, I would like to hear from the panelists. Uh, and I would also like to know, we have uh, over 85 participants. Femke, Femke we I'm here. Are, we are taking... We are Femke, taking, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Oh, he's here. Fantastic. Please, let us know about how Baba and his writing will enlighten and uh, promote his own philosophy, even beyond the built architecture, because he's much more than that. Mm. Yeah, before my internet goes off, before my internet goes off again, I, I think, uh, congratulations, Baba Dimas. I've had the privilege to have um, meet him in 2016, spent two years to find funding, um, I got a grant from Chicago and for one from the Church Foundation in London. Um, I came to see Baba in August 2018. I was there with him for two months. Then I was with him for uh, most of 2019, the whole year. So you can imagine waking up every day and speaking to Baba from literally I have to get into the office before him. Um, I've learned so much. My, my, sort of my life is completely changed as a person and an architect. Um, uh, I think what Baba has done is he's actually done all this work for us. You know, Baba, what Baba's, the, the three way I can sum up his work is within culture, community, and collaboration. Um, I think there's a bit more diversity than that, but everything Baba does is within the culture spectrum. So basically, one thing to slightly address in this conversation is that I've had his work been mentioned as vernacular. I think his work is very much contemporary. We just didn't understand it. It was just 50 years ahead of us. So we're just catching up to it now. Thank you, Mr. Conte. I think we might have lost him uh, again. Um, I wanted to ask, um, maybe his daughter knows, how much, uh, when, when you say his work was painted over at UI, uh, those pillars uh, disappeared. How much much of his work is officially protected as a monument or as heritage? Is that something that can be institutionally done? Because we have the institutions among us here who could maybe do something about that. Um, thank you so very much. Um, definitely, uh, we know how things go in Nigeria right now. Um, it is important that these jobs are these works are protected. It is important legally protected. You know, um, we have the heritage. UNESCO actually also did come in at some point um, on the heritage aspect to list it as a heritage building. That's the one in Delta State. His house in Delta State right now under Delta State is listed as a heritage building on the Delta State. It's not on the national one yet. And I understand there's something about before a job can be listed in the national, uh, become a listed building, there's something that states that it has to be a hundred years old before it becomes listed. I think we should do something about that because um, we would end up losing certain yeah. buildings if they're not protected with you know before a hundred years old i don't think that um yeah. should uh, be right the, the, i'm happy the president of nia is here as well and um these That's are things why that we invited all into. these people <laughs> <laughs> these are the things that we should look into policies that we should change to encourage and make sure buildings like these are protected. I remember working with um, architect John Godwin, late architect John Godwin, on one of the buildings, restoration of one of the buildings in Lagos. And we were about to start, that was being sponsored by Leventis then. It was it was um, interesting working on it, even though I worked on it as a student of University of Lagos. They took a few of us to work with them on it, but our stay with them was truncated because um, the university couldn't understand why we should be on that project, that we should just come back to school and do our schoolwork. That was really, really sad. Um, they tried all they could to keep us on, but the university just, um, the department just wouldn't hear of it at that time. But it was a good time when we worked in. Another building we're supposed to work on was um, 
I think was it the Ebo House or so, but before anybody could do anything, the building was demolished. You know, so that was a sad loss. And that's because it wasn't protected. So yes. Thank you so much. So what is like legacy, modernity architects? Um, and now the new culture movement, we should all come together and make sure policies are set down for this. That's why we're here uh, this evening. Um, I understand that uh, the audience has questions. We want to round up the panel discussion first in the next five minutes. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. Since we are so many, that's uh, by far the most effective way. And we'll get to them when the Q&A starts. Thank you so much. When it comes to restoration, um, the, um, the architect, um, um, uh, Mr. Arik Babu, is that also something that uh, we can help with or that is being done something about? Um, I heard uh, Professor Asojo say that these buildings are built to last, so maybe they don't need that much uh, restoration. Um, yes, they are built to last. Um, well, however, they are they are also built to be used. Um, I'm actually more interested in seeing Baba's buildings actually being used actively, um, rather than just re um being profiled as some kind of monuments, and then, uh, then you have some kind of red tape around them that keeps people away from them, um. It, some of the buildings are, are not completely finished, like um, the chapel um, at Iseluku, even though it's also in use, the, 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 um, the church is using the basement. Which um, chapel is that? Could you explain at, that to the at audience? Iseluku, at Iseluku, not far from um, Idumu Jogboko. And um, interestingly, even though the building is not finished, it still looks so beautiful. Uh, because the the design fundamentals are just um, incredible to to behold. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I I I would I would be interested in seeing a program for um, not just restoration but to put the buildings in use. And for the ones under Baba's control, we can see that he he is tireless in making sure that something is going on. I mean, his house definitely is in use. The factory has been under renovation for almost two years now, and that is still going on. The factory is even a totally different story because that speaks to the economic um, dimension to his work and how important that aspect is also um, to, the, to the nation's economy. Now that we're talking about the weak Naira against the dollar and all that. Um, also, New Culture Studios in Ibadan, which is um, quite um, relevant in this context in terms of its historical value to um, not just Baba's own practice and history, but also to um, artistic history in Nigeria, um, the Mbari movement and all that, which is intertwined with Baba's work. Um, and Baba, I, I mean, he he's not tired. He he's still working on new culture studios. He's still um he's, he's still creating more drawings. The extension is still um envisioning how the full complex will be like. Um, the funds are not there. His grandson, you know, Rufus Nwoko, is running um uh, new culture studios there, almost the way Baba was running it with lively activities. Um, between fashion and theater and and um, book readings going on there regularly. Um, but it takes a lot to run such an institution. I mean, if we think about institutions like House of World Cultures in, in Germany and other institutions in the UK and all that, it, it, I mean, it takes it takes heavy government funding to to program such spaces effectively. So Baba has done the architecture. But it's another thing to create the use that would actually activate that kind of facility at the level at which it's meant um, to operate. Thank um, you. So for me, it would be interesting uh, if Arribabu. there's a way that that kind of thing could be made to happen. To create that youth uh, to the three panelists that will be ready to take up that, um, uh, that challenge 
And uh, Baba, don't think that we are here, we are all looking at you admiringly. We know you will speak at the end of this forum. People are asking him uh, to speak, um, but he has agreed to speak at the end of this forum. And um, uh, when it comes to that youth, um, I've spoken to several students of architecture who said, well, he was never really part of our curriculum at architecture school. So how can we um, get to that? Who, who is in charge of the curriculum at schools of architecture? Mr. Ari Babu? I would ask just... I, the, the thing about the school curriculum is, um, if I may use the, if I may use uh, um, the language of the streets in Nigeria. It's a long thing. Um, I mean, it, it's, are you going to go through NUC? Are you going to go through um, the NIA and ACON? Um, then people, I, I mean, are people not going to ask, oh, why him? Why not somebody from my village? I, I, I'm being very plain here. But we are Nigerians and we know how these things happen. Um I, what I, I think will be more useful will be if as more people get aware of Baba's work, they should find ways of implementing it in one way or the other in their own practice. Um, and that's going to form a watershed that would make it immaterial whether um, there's a government directive from top down saying you must study the Masomoko's work. I'm not sure that's exactly what's going to do it for us. I think there has to be a collective consciousness and understanding of the principles, the first principles from which he's coming, and let everybody go and do the same, really. And that's what Baba is saying. Like in your practice, replicate this. Um, for I'll give a practical example. Um, I'm happy that Shomi has mentioned um Ade Shokumbi, who um I like to call team leader because of the way his work already boldly steps forward to define um, a lot of the things that Dimasoko's work is also saying. So with Ade Shokumbi, he naturally takes on interns and um, he tries to pass on some of his knowledge to them and all. However, he's taking it a step further by collaborating with um, Yaba College of Technology to run structured courses or a structured course over a period of time with um, young architecture students. And what he's going to try to do is to embed his practice within that program and let them come and learn th these new cultural principles within that system. So this helps to sidestep the bureaucracy of trying to um, introduce a formal curriculum overhaul to, you know, which I'm not sure that that's what we want to struggle with. That that may be a 10-year journey or a 20-year mm -hmm. journey. And it's fine for anybody who wants to do it. But I think that Thank you so much. How Thank ways you so much. Of bringing let's, Baba to the let's remain positive and hope that change is possible. Um, we're now opening up uh, to the Q&A with the audience also because the question about the change of the curriculum and how that works it's interesting to pose to people representing academia. And I see we have among us Professor Cordelia Osasuna. Prof, how can, do you have, um, could you unmute yourself and tell us if your students, if you are teaching your students about Dimas Nuoko? Okay. Hello, everyone. Can good you hear evening. me? Yes, we hear you. Okay, now. good evening. Yes, sorry. We just had a power outage where I am, so you can't see me, but I'm glad you can hear me. Um, I'm a staunch admirer, you know, of Dimas Woko's orientation in architecture. And I particularly, I'm very passionate about the way he brings art and architecture together. I listened very eagerly to what um, Ayodele had to say. And he was very, very spot on about the stumbling blocks galore 
we are likely to run into in academia if we want to be very straight laced about embedding DMAS's orientation in architecture into any curriculum. But some of us, myself as an example, we are disciples for life. My own area of specialization is vernacular architecture, and there's just no way I, I teach students about expressing themselves in real time today, but at the same time, taking on our cultural values, uh, you know, various artistic orientations that, you know, we just spontaneously have recourse to, and I'm not referencing Dimasuoku. So when all is said and done, like Ayodele said earlier, it's probably left to the individual who is passionate about the orientation Dimas has and who wants to pass it on. But I, I don't foresee in the near future any major breakthrough in terms of having it, you know, kind of officially embedded into any curriculum. Right now, the uh, NUC has come up with this CC mass thing. And, you know, they're very straight list about what you can take on board and what you cannot. Yes, they've left universities with 30% of what you can introduce. But I doubt whether you're going to get any run of the mill lecturer who doesn't, who isn't, you know, even in discussing bringing new things to make up the remaining 30%. You're going to have your work cut out to try and get colleagues who don't have the same orientation you have about architecture, sustainable Thank you so much, Professor. architecture. Thank you. You're going to have your let's, work cut out, getting them to buy into it. Let's ask for a response. Let's see what uh, architect Ben Ebo, the president of the Nigerian Institute of Architects, could respond to that or has to say. All right, uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, it's been a pleasure uh, listening to the contributions of uh, all those that, that have spoken. Uh, I'm a very optimistic person and uh, I don't see obstacles in uh, the way of what uh, we can do as a people and uh, also as, a, as architects. Now, um, I've known Dimas quite a bit from a distance, but uh, I got to meet him one-on-one -on -one, uh, when I took a trip to visit him at the village and uh, had an interaction with him and took a trip around the house. And um, it was after that that I began to see him from a different light. And uh, as an architect, I was quite awed by the way he provided solutions in such a basic manner to some of the uh, design elements that uh, we have around us. And I resolved that uh, as an institute, we must begin to take ownership of some of the things that are around us. You're and, talking, architect Benebo, about the NIA as an institute. Yes, right? yes, yes, yeah. as an institute, the NIA, because uh, the NIA is actually an advocacy group, and uh, whatever um, we push forward, we can always get the regulatory body to. Uh, Am I hearing you say, up to amongst, amongst ourselves, that you will be pushing to put Demas Woko's work on the curriculum in Nigeria? What I'm saying is that, yes, we would first and foremost um, increase the awareness. If you must know, um, Dimas is going to be one of our guests at our forthcoming Biennial General Meeting taking place in about a week's time. And uh, we'd use that opportunity to showcase not only his works, but also drum it into the ears of uh, architects that look, we must begin to celebrate what is ours in this country. And there's so much around us that we need to celebrate. Why should I know about Le Corbusier or Frank Lloyd Wright or any of those uh, architects uh, in the US and the UK when I don't know about anybody in Nigeria? 
Uh, and that goes also to the uh, academia that why would we not uh, do research? Because nobody is going to tell your story. You don't expect somebody from outside, even though John Godwin had uh, started by writing a book and it's uh, quite indicative that uh, it has to take a foreigner to even research on one of us. And so uh, after my visit to uh, Dimas, uh, a couple of months ago, I uh, told the Delta State chapter of the Institute that, look, there's something happening around you and you guys don't even know about it. There's a movement that has been festering and you don't know about it, that and on an annual basis, before God takes him, he needs to transfer that knowledge to a broad spectrum of architects, not just Thank random. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much. It's good to hear yeah. that he's found a true advocate in you. You yes, mentioned uh, academia. Now, yep. Professor Asojo would like to chip in. Thank you so yes. much, Professor. Thank you so much. I just, you know, along those lines as well, and how this can be embedded in academia, you know, when you think about most schools of architecture, when they teach history of architecture, they start from antiquity to industrial revolution, and then they go from industrial revolution to contemporary times. That was the same experience I had in Obafemi Aolo University as well as a student. And I'm sure it's like the same ex um, experience students have all over the world, like architect Ben Hebo already mentioned, we know about Le Corbusier, we know about Frank Lloyd Wright. Why? Um, I think what should happen in academia in Nigeria as well is to embed his work in the curriculum. When you're teaching history of architecture, you need to be including works of Nigerian architects like Demas Nwoko, because they're, I mean, th th that's what I wanted to add to this conversation as well. There are ways by which we can do it. And I mean, I'm, I for one, when I'm teaching my students about Nigerian architecture, you know that I'm showing a lot of his work and sharing a lot of the ideas that he has shared with us. Thank you so much, Prof. Now going to uh, an even more encompassing organization, Mr. Victor Ajagbo has also joined us. He's the program officer of UNESCO Abuja, and he would like to speak as well. Okay, uh, thank you, Femke. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Right. I um, I have listened to everyone. I have listened to everybody intervening from the start till now. Um, I am happy at this point that you mentioned that somebody from NCMM, the National Commission for Museums and Monuments, is present. Uh, them as Woko's work cannot, and I repeat emphatically, cannot just be preserved in the academia. Uh, for us to really appreciate what uh, uh, Baba Woko has done, those works also have to be treated as national monuments. And then um, I, I'm not very certain about the 100 year rule applying to monuments. I, I think that that rule applies to artifacts for it, an object to be classified as an artifact. It has to be 100 years. I, I will find out uh, about... Ajaibo, sorry to interrupt, but uh, we have somebody from NCMM here, Mr. Linus Kinji. Maybe he can come online too. He might know. He is uh, the curator of the National Museum, but he might be able to tell us what that 100-year rule uh, is about. Mr. Kinji, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you very much for this... Uh this opportunity of uh, following the discussion. And for me, a privilege uh, to join the discussion, especially in honor of Demas uh, Woko, who is a renowned um, architect and artist. Um, I will have had something else to say, but since I've been following the discussion, there have been misconceptions about what qualifies an object or even a monument uh, to be declared as a national monument. It's a pity that uh, so many uh, of the works of people like Demas Moko have been defaced and have been destroyed as um, his daughter, who made contribution, has said. I'm taking a serious um, um, note of that one, and I think in the next uh, line of activities, 
especially including what we've been doing with uh, legacy. We will take up that one as a subject matter and then pursue it uh, to a logical conclusion so that all the works that um, have been done and that are done all locations within Nigeria, especially within the southern area, are in fact um, liberated. And so on the issue of whether something could be 100 years before it can be declared as a monument, I think it is only when you are doing a listing of um, objects or sites that you consider as old that you can bring in the issue of 100 years or so. But the truth is that an artifact can be declared a monument or even an antiquity, even when it is produced today. The most important thing is that it must have an outstanding historical and cultural value. So you see, for, for historical um, uh, object, you could place uh, some kind of um, time. You say 100 years, you could say, depending on what the law says. But on cultural objects, so you can declare them, an object can be produced for a purpose uh, of history, and uh, it can be today, because of its importance and because of the importance of the uh, 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 become So, Mr. Uh, Kinji, uh, to get you no. right, the MCMM could uh, declare the Mazuoko's work uh, monumental or protected. Yes. So, yes. Uh, unfortunately, the representative of the DG is no longer with us. Uh, she might have dropped off our connection. But we will we will talk to the NCMM and uh, and take you up on that. Thank you so much for your input. Now it's seven thirty. Uh, we want to start rounding up. Uh, there are two arms um, that are still up, and we still want to give our guest of honor the the end word. But let me first um, give the word to Mr. Emeka Nwosu who's had his hand up for a long time. So go yeah. ahead. Right, good evening everyone. Um, Father Emeka Mosu from Dominican uh, University, pardon. Um, yeah, talking about um, what the academia can do with regards to the um, the works of Demas Moko. Um, this year, incidentally, the Dominican Priory, we are reside, is celebrating 50 years of the commissioning of the chapel. And so as part of the celebration, the Dominican University um, intends to, you know, is planning to unveil a Demasmoko chair of philosophy of African architectural design, you know, aesthetics. Um, um, we have a, we have a department of philosophy. Oh, yeah. And um, so the idea is to, um, to institute a, a chair in honor of uh, Demas Moko, uh, Chair of Philosophy. So the preparations are on, and uh, we intend to, we are reaching out to all the um, stakeholders as possible, so that um, that is part, so that's part of our efforts um, as hosts, because the chapel actually, we are more or less the host of this chapel, is hosted in our community. So um, with the, with more and more uh, attention being thrown to that, we think that, uh, it's we have a, even a greater responsibility to help to promote That's that. Great news, that. Mr. Lewis. If you have an, uh, a website or a link you can refer to, uh, put it in the chat so people can can uh, can look at that because All we right. need as much promotion uh, as we can get. Mr. Ola Banjo, please go ahead. What did you want to say? Yes. Um. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, it's good afternoon here. I'm speaking from Dallas, Texas. You're welcome, sir. Yes. I see um, Demas Walker's work more as a freedom approach to design. So I'm not looking at his style. His style is his style, you know? So I think he has opened a door that wasn't there before. I think he created that door for us, for us to believe that we can, we have the power to develop our own style. So when we look at a style of design, 
we should appreciate his design and take it from there that if he is able to develop his own style, just like Zawa Hadid developed a style that we haven't seen before, you know, so that gives us the courage to develop our own style. So if I were teaching in the class, I will only point to Dewan Walker's work as someone who did, who knows not what he was taught, but what he taught himself in the process. Because the best schools of architecture in the world, like AA, Harvard, most of these schools do not teach. They guide your own individual study. So that way you become who you can become based on your own thinking, based on your own ability to dig. Thank you so much, Mr. Bando. Yes. A very good point. Let yourself be inspired about from the work and build on that. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that input. Uh, penultimate question uh, to the Senator of the Dominican University in Ibadan, Mr. Francis Chadi. The floor is to you. Yes, my question goes to Demas. Yeah, I appreciate all the contributions and his own ingenuity to introduce what today we call disruption in originality. Uh, some people have made allusion that there are in CBD writings on the floor. I don't know whether he can corroborate that or there are mere uh, kind of guess that are far from his intention. All right, let's ask for for one more question and then the floor is to our honorary guests who has been with us for so long and uh, but now first dr phyllis ferguson the last question for you i just wanted to greet um demas i i was a colleague at the university of abaddon and his architecture is deeply appreciated here in britain uh, I want him to understand that students, particularly at Oxford Brooks, are involved at the present moment at looking at some of his buildings in the architecture program. So thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you so much. Uh, now the last word to Baba Demos Nuoko himself, who has been listening to everyone intently. People have been greeting him. Please unmute. Hello, um, welcome to everybody. Are you hearing me? Yes, we are yes, hearing sorry, you, Baba. Okay, so, well, uh, Hello, Baba. we're hearing you. Yes, yes. Uh, I've been listening. But I can assure everyone that I'm very comfortable with uh, 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 this program and uh, very comfortable with what everybody has said. Um, uh, I think uh, might be, uh, I would like to say that I am more ordinary than might be uh, uh, everybody on this program thinks. Uh, I, I'm a simple worker in the vineyard. Uh, as, far as, as far as architecture is concerned, everything I've, I've done has been done deliberately, studied, and uh, uh, the reaction uh, that we're witnessing today, uh, I would say I didn't expect it. It looks more like uh, about this story uh, 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 or this statement that if it were possible for you to die and then people talk about you and then you wake up <laughs> you, you, uh, you, you know, and you'll be hearing what they will say. Um, uh, yes, uh, what I've done is very natural. Architecture to me is uh, uh, about geography and culture. Uh, right from childhood, 
Uh, that was inculcated into me uh, in my part of the world. And uh, uh, I decided right from childhood that I will propagate this. I've not done that simply. And uh, uh, I would say that uh, not that I enjoyed doing that. I felt that very comforted. I was not fatigued at all. I'm still not fatigued. Uh, so uh, uh, I know that what will the outcome will be natural also. Uh, Maybe I uh, over uh, or, or I gave it. Uh, uh, a little bit of push by making my works a little bit more solid so that it can last that longer. So because uh, I believe that uh, I had a message, I had, I, I had something to contribute. That's all, it's as simple as that. Uh, I set out to contribute to architecture. Uh, Thank you so much, Baba. Your modesty and your energy uh, speaks volumes. Let me just um, read out to you a couple of things people said in the chat because um, um, someone who appreciates Baba Dima's originality and calls to originality in the architectural world, he designed by studying the need and give each, each work a deeper meaning. That's one of the uh, comments. Um, the other one, wait a minute, where is it? Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing to have him alive uh, and with us, Judy Erika again. It's an honor to celebrate him also while he's with us, and that's very important. The door to future inquiries have just opened. Baba cannot be thanked enough for opening this door. And I would like on behalf of Legacy also um, uh, contend to that. Um, let's um, round up, uh, Baba. Is there anything more you wanted to ask? Because it's already way past 7.30 and we have already asked a lot of your time. Or can we start rounding up this uh, legacy webinar in your honor? Is there anything you wanted to ask? To, to add, Baba? Baba? Mm -hmm. You want to know if there's any question you want to ask? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. No, no, as I said, no, 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 I don't have a. Right. I don't have any question. I think uh, what's unfolding, as I said, is very natural. Uh, I believe, you know. So, uh, so, so, so uh, I'm very comfortable with you all, and I hope that uh, uh, we will all keep growing together. Let's hope so, Baba. Thank uh, you so, so much. I thank Legacy for for organizing the program. You are most welcome. I thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. Now, we promised you in the beginning that we would take action points, not just leave with uh, a lot of talk and not doing anything. What I took up from this is, first of all, Legacy is going to look at organizing a tour to Ibadan because if even our, um, our own Shomi Delano hasn't visited yet, where it's just one train ride away, we should go and see those wonderful works in Ibadan and also in the village. Then we're going to talk to the NIA, Mr. Ben Ebo, the optimist, how to get the work on the curriculum and to UNESCO and the NCMM, how to protect his work from encroachment, from overpainting, from disappearing, etc. And um, like uh, his daughter Bofu has asked, let's find out where those totems are, have gone, 
that were um, at the airport. It's my turn now to give the floor back to Shomi Delano. And thank you so much for attending this webinar. Yeah, thank you all for um, taking time out on a Thursday evening. Um, it might not be evening here, it might not be evening where everyone is. Um, it's such uh, it's so nice to um, have this moment to speak and all of us who are cultural enthusiasts to just come together. And a bit about legacy. Legacy is the leading umbrella heritage and cultural preservation group of Nigeria. Uh, I've dropped the link in the chat of our website and you are invited to join our mailing list, which is free and also become a member which starts from just as little as 5,000 Naira. Uh, and um, so thank you. Legacy is a fully um, a fully volunteer-run organization. And so all the work we do uh, is, uh, you know, it's, it's run by non-paid volunteers. So thank you everyone for joining um, this talk. You can subscribe to our YouTube page as well if you want to watch this uh, webinar again or have another virtual tour of um baba demas's uh buildings so that's all for me thank you much everyone thank you very much everyone thank you all the panelists thanks everyone we're going to round up this meeting now and especially the last big thank you to Baba Demas Luoko himself. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Baba. Bye. Bye bye. Bye, Bye bye. Bye. See you again soon. <laughs> yes. Hope to bye, see everyone yeah. of you. Bye, everyone. We have quite a few things coming up. We'll keep sending them out. Bye, Bofu. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. See you all. Thank, Thank you all for coming. Thank you for organizing. Welcome. Bye. 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 Thank you, Legacy. Bye. Thank you, Joseph. Thanks for organizing. Thank you. Bye bye, Kachifo. Bye. 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 Bye